भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गौ स्वामी महाराज नमाचार्य शिव हरिदास ठाकुर की कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत निराधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त बंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण कृपि गौ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरि गोवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय गौरी धाम की जय गंगमय की जय रामय की जय भक्ति देवी की जय तुलसी देवी की जय सर्वथा भक्त बंद की जय गौ प्रेमानंद नम ओम विष्णु भगवते वासुदेवाय talk about being open minded open your heart and <coughs> fill it with love and all that kind of thing <coughs> you're not very impressed <laughs> all right so uh yeah well open mindedness is needed in a multicultural society britain is now famous for being open minded not like the old brits who went all over the world and conquered them. 
<clears throat> now all the people they conquered have come and settled in London, and in Cromwell, so as far as you know, they didn't quite make it to London yet. So, they've come here and we have to accept them as brothers and sisters and be open our hearts and be open-minded and loving and all that kind of thing. Or we, we can just treat everyone equally, we just ignore everyone. That's closer to what's going on in Britain today, just ignore everyone. So, uh, open-mindedness. Hinduism is open-minded, right? Very tolerant. You have to be when there are so many faiths. There are Shaivas and Vaishnavas and Ganapatyas and Smartas and atheists. You can be an atheist and be a Hindu, right? You don't have to believe in anything, theoretically. All right, so everyone should be very open-minded and appreciate everyone and tolerate everyone and everything. And that's modern Britain, right? Is that how you were raised? Krishna, Prashta, Das, to be very open-minded? Yeah, I think it's from the multi, multicultural... Multi like multiculturalism. Indian you even married an Indian wife. Pardon? You even married an... Well, kind of Indian. She's from Mauritius. No, no, she's from... She's um, a genuine Indian. Punjab originally. From the Punjab, That's originally. Right. I see. So you're very open-minded. <laughs> so people in Britain are very open-minded. What about in America? Here's a former resident of Secunderabad, who is now living in Orlando, which is the birthplace of Mickey Mouse, or at least his present address. <laughs> what are the most? One of the uh, outstanding personalities of the 20th century and now of the 21st century. And don't laugh because you have to be open-minded. Don't have, don't hold any grudges against Mickey Mouse. Okay, you may be wondering where the Krishna consciousness is in this talk. It's coming. It's coming. So people are open-minded. Well, Guru Baranga, who lived there, he told me that the people of the southern states of America, the whites there, are still in a in amazement that how could all those people in, in the north vote for a black to be the president of the country so they're not so very open minded oh there's a whole thing that was big in the news recently some black kid got shot dead so and the guy got away free so that's not very open minded is it so anyway, uh, yeah, everyone should be open-minded, but, 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 we find everyone, their mind is completely closed to the really important factors in life, which is, no, they're not close to making money, to going on holiday in various places, uh, so... People are open-minded, but they're closed. If we tell them that the real problems of life are... What are the real problems of life? Too many Indians in this country. Muslims and Pakistanis and blacks. And what happened to all the British people? That's the real problem. No, that's wrong. No, go to the back of the class. You might even go to jail for saying that. What's the real problem? Anyone? Birth, death, old age. Right, okay, very good. You go to the front of the class. <laughs> Birth, death, old age and disease. If we walk up to your average open-minded British person and tell him that, my dear sir, you're wasting all of your life by not being open to the fact that you have to die. How would the average Brit respond to that? Well, by the first three words, they would have already walked, walked past, all right? They wouldn't even listen. What do you think, Arjuna Das, British citizen, born in Siberia, was it? This time around, British people, they complain about the weather, except this summer. But it's a lot better than Siberia. So, you have a lot of inter You probably have a lot more interaction with the British people than most British people do, right? 
just like I live in India, but I traveled around. I'm not from India, but I've been to, I've traveled around much more of India than average Indian people. So you interact with a lot of people, distributing prasada and going to festivals. More or less. Yeah. So if you say to your average British person that the real problems of life are birth, death, old age, and disease, you can't say it here. No. You can't say it. Why not? People are not open-minded? I don't think so. What would be the average reaction? Be, People yeah. might feel somewhat offended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They I feel offended. So. Why is that? If they're supposed to be open-minded. You're yeah. supposed to talk about the weather. And You're supposed to talk about the weather. That's still... <laughs> <major problem. laughs> Keep it light. <laughs> don't, don't talk anything serious. Is that there's an unspoken policy. Don't talk about politics or religion. So if we talk that birth, death, old age and disease are the real problems talking about religion. It's not talking about religion, it's talking about a fact. Religion means, as people think it, a belief system. People ask us, what do you believe? Isn't it? If, if they're being, if they're a little curious, which most people aren't, they may ask, if you see us dressed like this, what do you believe? Because it's presumed that religion means some kind of belief, something uh, vague, unprovable, unverifiable. So it's a belief. Someone believes that God sits on a cloud and throws everyone into hell, and someone else believes there's no God up there in the clouds. That's their belief. And someone believes that a prophet rode up into heaven on a horse and other people don't believe it. So it's just you can't prove it or disprove it. But this is not a matter of belief. It's a fact. Birth, death, old age and disease. As we were driving here, coming into Crawley, we saw a sign, road sign, to the crematorium. So I thought, well, that's the way everyone's going. <laughs> That's the, all roads lead to where? Who knows the same? All roads lead to where? Rome? All roads lead to the crematorium. Everyone's going that way. And if we say this, then people they get offended. Oh, I don't know what to talk about that for. Yeah, I remember once in, uh, in India, I was on a train from Bombay to Udupi, Mangalore. And I. I was speaking to the people around me, like, well, we all have to die. And they all, they all got ex extremely offended. Well, why are you talking about that? Well, now you're alive, just enjoy yourself. Well, so you have to die. <laughs> well, it's natural. Why, what are you going to talk about that for? They became very offended. Because people want to be an illusion. People want to be an illusion. I said it twice. I'll say it again, people want to be an illusion, because it doesn't sound correct, does it? But it's a fact. People don't know. Why should people get offended if you tell them the real problems of birth, death, old age and disease? Why should people get offended? Especially when they've been raised on British open-mindedness. You shouldn't get upset. Should, you know, oh, well, oh, okay. Okay, mate. I don't understand <laughs> So, uh, people are not open to face this because, why is that? People like to live in an illusion. If we recognize that there is birth, death, old age and disease, then how can we enjoy ourselves? How can we enjoy everything that there is to be enjoyed in this world? And then we come to the question that, well, there is nothing actually enjoyable. And people say, no, well, there is. What is there enjoyable? They've had a great summer here, yeah, it's still going on. Temperatures go up to, what, even up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 28, 29 Celsius. Great summer. Of course, just had a terrible winter. Uh, Okay, had a great summer. What else? What else is there to enjoy? So many things. London, London is just north of it. So in London, there's so many things to do that you couldn't exhaust the possibilities. So many movies to see, 
Of course, you can do that in your home now. You don't have to go to London, but it's only, what is there, theatres, concerts. You can see the River Thames. Uh, sports, all kinds of sports events. What else can you do there? You can go to the Hare Krishna. What else is there? Climb the shard. Hmm? Climb the shard. You can climb the shard. How do you do that? Speak to the six women and climb it. You, you climb it like a, like mountain climbing, people do that? Really? Bungee jumping. Once you've jumped to the top, you can bungee jump off the shard also? Really? So I learned something. No, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many things you can do. But, there's one, at least one major problem with all of this, and that is that you have to die. And, also, you are likely to suffer on the way also. Just like you might have noticed, just to give an example, that I was struggling a bit when I was bowing down to offer obeisance. Why is that? Because two days ago, suddenly I got a crick in my back. And it's painful. It's not the worst thing in the world. I'm sure there are many worse things to come. But... These are the kind of pains we have to go through. Now I can't climb the shard. Not that I would have done anyway. <laughs> but even if I try, I, I mean, I'm not in a condition right now to even think of it. And it's a good thing. Because, what, what am I my time doing that for anyway? So, uh, people are very expert at closing their minds to the really important things to do. And that the really important considerations Maybe even as duality, we, we like to hear about all nice things, stories of Krishna, which is all very nice. But we also have to know that Krishna gives us the knowledge in Bhagavad Gita. It's not a religious belief. It's a fact that we all have to suffer birth, death, old age and disease. What are the sensory words for that, anyone? Birth, death, old age, and disease. Janma mrityu jaravyadhi. What is dukkha devasham and darshana? Krishna states that one major factor of knowledge is seeing the distress of birth, death, old age, and disease. Anu darshana. Anu darshana means, anu means following and darshana means seeing. So that means that we see through the parampara system. We actually, we don't see. We should see. We do see with our eyes, but we don't see. Because our mind is close to it. So we see by hearing <coughs> from authorities who teach us Bhagavad Gita. So that's called anudarshana, following others who teach us to see what we see but we don't see. Pashyat api na pashyati. That's also a statement. We see but we don't see. So we can actually see by following the parampara, the spiritual authorities. And anu means following. That also means one moment follows another. So continually see. Moment after moment we should see. We should not forget that. We shouldn't go and for our Bhakti Shastri course, and then write in birth, death, old age, disease, these are the miseries, get first prize in the Bhakti Shastri course, and then forget it. We should continue to see at every moment this is the suffering of this material world. So, uh, if we take Krishna consciousness as a religion, like some religion of this world, then we won't see that. We will uh, we'll prefer to take the what we think are the nice parts. But the fact is that Krishna consciousness is not a religion that you can choose, but it is essential for everyone because we all have to suffer birth, death, old age, and disease. And the only solution to this to come out of this suffering condition is to surrender to Krishna. Mamupitya Pulaya Jagna Dukhala Mashashvata. This in Bhagavad Gita Krishna says that the, the uh, this material world is 
place of misery, everything is temporary. Then what is that? Nav, mamu peitya puna janma, dukhala ma shashvatam nav mulanti mahatmana. The the mahatmas, they don't come back to this place of misery. So who are they mahatmas? Mahatmanas to mamu parta, daidi parti mahashita, majanti ananya mana. So yada bhuta de navyayam. Those who know Krishna and are fully engaged in his service, they are mahatmas. So, Krishna consciousness means to love Krishna. Actually, it means, first of all, to, to be conscious of Krishna. But to be conscious of Krishna means to love Krishna. Well, it's also possible to be Krishna conscious and hate Krishna. There's not much in between. Either you love or you hate. And there are some who hate also. We have, we know the history. Kamsa, Shishupal. Shalva, Jarasandha, Dantavakra, and then Krishna in other forms as Rama, Ravana, he didn't like Rama, he didn't love Rama. Rama, Kumbhakarna, two brothers, they didn't like Rama. And then Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, they didn't like Vishnu, Varahadeva, and Vishnu. But the natural position of every living being is to love Krishna. So to know him is to love him. So Krishna consciousness in the natural condition means to love Krishna. But in this material world we are uh, a long way from that and therefore in Bhagavad Gita Krishna gives us the knowledge of what is our actual self-interest. The knowledge of our self-interest, first we should see this condition is temporary and miserable. Dukhale amashashvata. It is, well, that's in different order. Anitya amashashvata. It's temporary and miserable. So, uh, we should understand this. We don't <coughs> like to understand because close-minded. The mind is open to all different possibilities of sense enjoyment and also open to all different... Open-minded means we're open to people living their life the way they like, according to their understanding of what makes them happy. If it makes you happy, it's okay. That's what open-mindedness means. <coughs> Let people do whatever they like, as long as it doesn't harm others. That's open-mindedness, isn't it? We shouldn't try to tell anyone what to do or to try to impose on them any way of life. Let people do whatever they like as long as they don't harm others. So it sounds like a very good idea. But uh, unless we give Krishna consciousness to others, then we are harming others. Therefore, one should not even be a parent unless one can give Krishna consciousness to one's children. One shouldn't interact with others unless one can... Actually, this verse of Rishabhdev says, unless you can free others from birth and death, don't have a relationship with anyone. That verse is there. Guru nasasyat, svajano nasasyat, pita nasasyat, janani nasasyat. Krishna, as Rishab Dev says, don't be a guru unless you can deliver your dependence from birth and death. That means talking a lot more than simply open-mindedness. As I said in the beginning of this little talk, the, uh, mostly we expect gurus to speak about be open-minded, live in harmony, don't harm others. Okay, 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 all right, all right. But simply talking about being open-minded does not save us from birth and death. And that is the duty of the guru, to give the knowledge by which others can be free from birth and death. Krishna is the first guru. Krishna Vande Jagat Guru. Krishna is the guru of everyone. He's a real guru. He's not a cheating guru. 
who simply likes to, to make people feel happy on the mundane platform. Uh, making people feel happy without informing them what their real necessity is, is simply cheating. So a real guru must give the knowledge by which people can become free from birth and death. So Krishna is a real guru and teaches in Bhagavad Gita that we're suffering birth, death, old age and disease. Because if we're going to be free from birth and death, first of all we have to understand that these are our real problems. Simply being multiculturally open-minded avoids the real problem. And we're suffering birth, death, old age, and disease. So Krishna informs us. The Guru must inform us. Not only inform us, but he must give the process by which we can get free from birth. And death. So one should not become a relative, or one should not have an intimate relationship with others unless we can deliver them from birth and death. It's a great responsibility. One should become a father or a mother. We think. Unless you can deliver your children from birth and death. You say, father and mother, well, they're responsible to make sure they get all their injections, make sure they go to school, and then after that they can do whatever they like. This is not parenthood, according to the Bhagavata direction. Parenthood means, yeah, you arrange, it's your duty to guide the children so that they can be free from birth and death. Daivangatasyam. One should not accept any position of honor. Just like in Vedic culture, the Brahmanas, they are honored. Nowadays, in modern culture, like in British culture, you're open to everyone, but you don't honor anyone. There's no concept of honoring anyone. Offering respect to people. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe uh, some <coughs> famous footballer would be respected. But that's ridiculous. That's just stupid. For what? Because he's expert in kicking a ball around. Who else? Anyone else respected? Who's respected? Big rock star. Rock star is that? Rock star? All the, all the famous rock stars, are there. they're all dying off now. Right? There must be new ones. So there. But there's all the age of disease, folks. It happens to rock stars too. So your Rolling Stones, where are they going to roll off to next? <laughs> What's their next destination? They're not thinking. They're still trying to enjoy it. foolishness. Yeah, I saw some movie when I was on a plane of the Rolling Stones tour in Canada. And they must have been, this is a few years ago, I was in Canada flying from one place to another. And there was these men, they must have been over 60 years old, and they're all little schoolgirls screaming in front of them. And they were wiggling their hips, and they're all old men. Foolishness. These people are, oh, the Rolling Stone. You all heard the Rolling Stone, I guess, isn't it? You all heard the Rolling Stone. You all heard the Rolling Stone. Yeah, you all know. Such famous people. For what? For jumping around like monkeys on a stage. And they're still doing it. Maybe, I don't know yet. So the Bhagavatam says, Svavibhara hoshtra karai samstuta purusha pashavu nayad kara pato petas jatu nama gadagaja. People who are like hogs, you know those things people like to eat? Danish bacon, very popular in Britain. Danish bacon. I know you all of you don't eat it. But many other people in this country. It's a staple part of British culture. You also didn't eat it, but many the people you're working with, it's a good British breakfast, right? Bacon and eggs. Ugh. Pigs, smelly pigs. So people who are like pigs and dogs, of course in Britain the dog is also very respectable. <laughs> camels, you don't have camels here except in the zoo I guess. And asses, you don't get many asses here anymore. They used to be, now they have tractors and cars and all this kind of thing, they don't get asses. So people who are like dogs, hogs, camels and asses, 
they give importance to, they praise people who do not praise Krishna. Who are simply wasting their life, living like pigs and dogs and camels and asses. So this is very harsh language, isn't it? It's, it's pretty rough. I mean, if you w walk up to the average person on the street and say, um, well, um, what else? I mean, are you more like a pig or a dog or a camel or an ass? Let me see now. Hmm. Maybe a combination of all of them. I mean, that's not very open-minded. People wouldn't appreciate that. However open-minded they are, if you just came up to them and said, well, I think you're more of a pig than a dog or a camel or an ass. If you say they're like a dog, they might think, well, that's good. In fact, once when Srila Prabhupada was in America, he warned, he was telling some students that if you're not careful, you become a dog in the next life. And one student said, well, that's okay. I don't mind becoming a dog. Srila Prabhupada said, you have my blessing. <laughs> you want to be a dog? You can be a dog. So, uh, people are going to feel flattered by that. That's not good. I mean, holy, saintly people, you're supposed to make people feel good, right? You're supposed to make them feel nice and smile at them and tell them how nice they are and, and uh, sing a little gentle, peaceful song and light a candle. That's important. You should always light a candle for peace. It doesn't make any difference to the peace or the violence in the world, but people feel nice if you light a candle and say, Om. Uh, and then lighting a candle for peace and you can be on television and people will cheer you oh what a wonderful thing meanwhile outside there's some drunken people are beating up an old lady and, but anyway you lit a candle for peace and it makes people feel that's what gurus are supposed to do right? make people feel good and talk very gently hold a flower offer to Krishna so, uh, <coughs> the Bhagavatam says that people who do not, who have no interest in Krishna consciousness, they're just like, well, it, what it actually says is that they praise people who themselves are like hogs, dogs, camels, and this. So it seems very harsh, but actually it's a fact that life is very harsh. And Open-mindedness is a way to being open-minded and accepting different people's ways of life and beliefs. That's one way to live in this world with a little less harshness. Instead of having uh, continual racial riots, we can all just learn to live and let live, let it be, whisper words of wisdom, let it be, <laughs> and all that kind of thing. But, there's still the, what should be the overwhelming fact, which we all ignore, we all have to suffer in this material world. Birth, death, old age and disease. And human life is not meant for simply tolerating others other people's beliefs. You could say, well, that's better than having ongoing wars and battles and uh, slanging matches. So, okay, all right, it's good. It's a step up from being a jerk. But it's not the point of life simply to be nice to others. Simply by being nice to others and avoiding the problems of birth, death, old age and disease, we are wasting our human life. This human life is very valuable. We got it after many, many births. We are suffering. Who can deny that we are suffering? Birth, death, old age and disease. Everyone has to suffer. It doesn't matter what your belief is. People say, what is your belief? It doesn't matter what our belief is. Whatever we believe, it is a fact that we have to suffer. Birth, death, old age and disease. Just see our...
friend here looks to be suffering from a backache. Is it? Backache? Lying down there. Yeah, he's got a backache. Lotus looks like suffering from a severe backache. Yeah. So, what to do? You can give him a massage. That might help. I mean, we're not saying that we shouldn't be empathetic to others. We're not saying that we should just ignore all the problems of the world, but we should see that the real problem is that we have to suffer this. I mean, even if you do get free from your backache, so I, I hope you get free from your backache. I'm also suffering from backache. Uh, but then we have to suffer another ache. This ache, that ache, broken bones. And ultimately, we all have to make a journey to the cemetery, as I've said previously. There's a sign to the cemetery. All the roads lead to the cemetery. And then what next? And then we get born uh, as a pig, and we become the <laughs> Danish baker. On the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We Danish baker, and you become. And, uh, you do a service to the British people by supplying them with food stuff. This is what happens. Actually, uh, you can say we well, can say it in a humorous way, but it's not even slightly humorous. It's terrible, horrible fact. If we look in the news, we'll see all kinds of horrible, what horrible things are going in the world now. What, what, Egypt fighting, Syria fighting, uh, India-Pakistan border fighting. Where else? London, someone's fighting. Friday night, I mean, it's fight. maybe not fighting, they're fighting in Egypt, but... Friday night means go and drink and then some fighting, right? Isn't it? And that's the fun. Fighting. So fighting, fighting. So uh, it's a horrible situation. Maybe we should go to the country to get some peace. But you know what's going on in the country? The uh, insects are being eaten by the birds, the smaller birds are being eaten by the bigger birds. Just we were at this, uh, at midday, in just outside Zagreb in Croatia, that Mataji was saying that all the time the, the next door neighbor's cat catches the mice and different creatures and brings them onto her patio and kills them there. It's a slaughterhouse, even though she's a devotee. But her house has turned into a slaughterhouse. The cat likes to kill. The next door neighbor's cat likes to kill mice in, in front of her house. So that's, that's it. The country looks peaceful, but it's full of conflict. Killing, 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 killing. All the living creatures are living in fear. Have you seen the bird? Are there any birds left after all this? Always, uh, you don't see many birds nowadays. You know, pesticides and cats. Mm, cats. Cats. Cats kill a lot of birds. Cats kill a lot of birds. And uh, this uh, towers. What's that? Microwave that also kills them. So the, I, that was, I actually noticed that in the, we were in that country, in Croatia. There's so many birds in the cities. You don't see them. We used to in the cities also, but they're gone now. So, uh, what was I talking about? The, the killing, killing, killing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what we get. We have a human birth, and then we get a, a pig birth, dog birth, insect birth, and just one living being is killing another. The whole material world is full of violence and fear. I was going to say about birds, we used to see them. On the, they'll come on the grass in the morning, and they'll look for a worm to pull up. So the worm is afraid of the bird, but the bird is afraid of the cat. So while the bird, while the bird is looking down at the wormhole, he's also looking here and there, all the time, afraid of the cat. Constant fear. That is the condition of this material world. But in human life, we try to 
whitewash that we all forget it. We think we're safe. Now I got I got this uh, locking system on my door. See, people are going away. If we're telling some nice stories and jokes, they won't go. Away. But to hear about birth and death, who wants to hear about that? Better go home and watch the TV. <laughs> this is called ignorance, foolishness. So it, it, the world is full of fear and suffering. We like to hear the birds chirping in the morning, but they're just chirping and then they'll go off and find some, uh, some insects to eat. The swifts, now in, in the summer, swifts come to England, right? They still come here? Still see them? They're flying around all the time. What are they doing? They, they look very nice, isn't it? You know this bird, the swift? You all know that bird? Don't know? They, they look very nice, and, but while they're flying, they're looking for flies, little insects to eat. So, even the peacock, they look so nice. But they like to eat all kinds of insects and this and that. So this material world, it's a place of violence and suffering and fear and birth and death. We have to suffer. This point, people don't like to hear it, but we should say it. And we should say it among the society of devotees also, because you may say, well, we already know all that. I already got my Bhakti Shastri degree. And I know that. But... We tend to forget it. We, maya, the maya that we embrace makes us close-minded. We, we get in this complacent situation of thinking, well, everything's okay. And I'm a devotee, so Krishna will look after me. But if we're not very serious about Krishna consciousness, we have to suffer. Birth, death, all the disease. It goes on and on and on and on. Until what? What's, this, what's the end of all this? Daivi yesha guna mahi mam maya durangaya mamei vayei prapadyante maya me This birth and death is caused by maya. It's very difficult to overcome. We can overcome it if we surrender to Krishna. Surrender means nothing left for me. No hope. I, I, well, I've given up all hopes of trying to enjoy this material world. Fully surrender to Krishna. No more hope. When we, be, when we become hopeless, then we're in a very good situation. Actually. Is this my theory? That's said in Bhagavata. That Nairasha uh, Paramasukam. When we become hopeless, then we can attain the highest happiness. There is one anecdote of one uh, devotee or uh, came to uh, someone. Someone came to Srila Prabhupada and said, uh, "There's so many problems and I'm suffering so much." And said, oh, it's very good. It's very good. Now you can take the spiritual life. As long as we're thinking we can enjoy this material world, we can't make any real progress in the spiritual world. As long as we're thinking there's something, there's something here for me to enjoy, we can't make any progress. So Krishna very kindly points out, Janma mrityu jaravyadhi dukkha doshana doshana. We should see the miseries of birth and death. And if we have that kind of vision, then we can even think that a backache is Krishna's mercy. What do you think about that? To, the backache reminds us that, well, there are a lot more aches than that. There's a lot more suffering. Better be Krishna conscious. We should be Krishna conscious simply to love Krishna. But in the beginning, when we're simply loving our prospects for sense gratification, it's a, it's a good start. It's, it's first gear. You have to get in first. Of course, some people start in second gear, but then, especially in India. But then it doesn't go very smoothly. 
So it's a good study. We have to make that study. Understand this material world is miserable. Of course, uh, we don't want to unnecessarily make the body harmed because we have to use this body to serve Krishna also. So we don't... If there's a backache, then we can take some treatment if there is any treatment. There's not much you can do, is there? What do you think? Do you have a regular backache? It's getting better. <laughs> Is, is it the doctors they can't do much of? Maybe physiotherapists they can help you. Is it? Are you taking physiotherapy? That's right. Yeah. Otherwise, with drugs and all this kind of thing. Sometimes they do an operation and that usually makes things worse. So, uh, we want to keep the body healthy so that we can serve Krishna. If the body, and, and in our neophyte state, if the body is very sick and suffering, then it's difficult for us to concentrate on chanting Hare Krishna because if there's a lot of pain, then we become pain conscious. It's very difficult for us to be Krishna conscious if there's too much pain. Or there are different kinds of sickness. There's nausea, it's not exactly pain, but the, the, the experience of it is so overwhelming that is difficult for us to think of Krishna. Or if we have some, some disease that makes us very drowsy, like hepatitis, then it's difficult for, us to, or, or difficult for us to think of Krishna. So we, sh we don't deliberately try to bring suffering to ourselves. Or we try to keep the body healthy so that we can serve Krishna. But we should understand that yeah, everyone's on the road to the crematorium. But we should act in such a way that before that inevitable moment comes, which may come at any time, we say that, but it's difficult for us to imagine. Like, I'm calculating. I might have another 15 years or so of active service to Krishna in this body, maybe, but then there's no guarantee of 15 nanoseconds. It's difficult to, see, difficult to imagine how I could digest in this situation, but it's possible. There, there are many instances of people just, they're quite healthy and then all of a sudden, boom, they just die. Without, unexpected. Just, they just drop dead on the spot. Sometimes it happens that entertainers, they, they just, they're doing, they're on the stage or something, and then they just drop dead in front of others. So, it can happen at any time. And certainly it will happen. What will happen? What is certain? As sure as death. Jatasya hi dhruvam mrityu. If you don't believe me, well, take it from Krishna. Krishna says, everyone who is born, they have to die. And dhruvam jatma mrityasya cha. And when you die, then certainly we will get born again. What does that mean? If we die, it's certain that we'll die, and it's certain that we'll get born again. That means the certain that we'll die again, the certain that we'll get born again, and again, and again, and again, punarapi janana, punarapi varana, goes on and on and on. Therefore, Krishna advises us. Best advice for every conditioned soul in this material world. There's one verse which Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur said. He would go on preaching until his last breath. This is Krishna's advice, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He emphasized it so much. Labdhasu durlabam idam bahu sambhavante manusham artadam anityam api hadhyam turnam yatita napateda numritya yavan nisraya sara vishaya kuna Sarvatasya. Krishna says, we have attained, who Krishna is speaking to? He 
you're speaking to Uddhava. But we can say to any human, now you have a human birth. If we try to speak these things to the hogs, dogs, camels and asses, what will they understand? They're also jivas. But if you say to the hog, uh, why don't you listen to some Bhagavad Gita? And there's no way for them to understand. Not the hogs or the dogs or the camels or the asses. All the human beings who have the consciousness of animals, they can't hear these things. If we tell them, uh, my dear sir, you have to suffer repeated births and deaths. They don't like to hear. They do not like to hear. They take it as an insult. Why are you trying to make this? So a human being, they can understand these things. But the human birth is attained after many, many births. Now we have it. Now we have it. This human life is temporary. Won't last very long. Won't be here very long. Child is born. Oh, some some uh, child was born recently in England. It became international news. Mm -hmm. This Prince, what do they call him, George? Was it yeah. Prince George? Mm -hmm. Of course, some of the other children are born. So uh, Prince George. Well, there'll be some time now. Now he's in the news for getting born, and there'll be a time when he's in the news for dying also because. Princes get in the news. I didn't get in the news when I was born, and nor did any of you, probably. And when we all die, we probably won't get in. Well, I'm a bit of, I'm a little big shot in this one, so I'm going to get a few lines on Dundalats or something. <laughs> so, uh, Prince George, wake up! You got a human birth. You got a human birth. It won't last very long, Prince, this time, and sorry to say, but now this really might be taken as offensive, but it's a fact, if we know the laws of karma, that there's a very good chance that Prince George might, in his next birth, be a hog, a dog, a camel, or an ass, because that's what happens to most people uh, in the modern age, because they live like animals, they get born as animals. But now we have the human birth and we can think about these things. Therefore we should do so. This I'm explaining this verse. We should, we should try to understand this. This human life doesn't last long. The only thing we can say for sure is that it won't last. And we can also say that we'll get born again. This body won't last. Now we have it. Therefore, we should do whatever, in this human life, we should do whatever is required so that we don't get born again. And as far as sense enjoyment is concerned, what is this sense enjoyment? Why don't we like to hear about birth, death, old age and disease? Because we want sense enjoyment. Let me enjoy eating, sleeping, mating, fighting watching TV, going to football games, reading the Daily Mail, and uh, what else? Internet, movies, soccer, concerts, holidays, sunbathing. There's so many things to do. But, sense gratification is available in every birth. Human life is meant for God realizing, <coughs> for getting free from birth and death. So, we should tell people this. You all know this. Whatever I've said this evening, I hope you've already heard it all before. Is it? Nothing new for any of you. Did I say anything new? No. Nothing new. So, we should tell others. People don't know. People think, we're born, and then we die. And, you know, they don't think we die. <laughs> they know, but we think, well, after death, everything is finished. So if at all they think about it, they think, well, everything's finished. So enjoy while you can. 
this is foolishness. We should inform people that there is rebirth, there is suffering, and there is escape from all of this. There is eternal happy life. We are meant for a happy life. Why are you trying to be happy in London or Crawley? The, the, the best thing that ever happened in Crawley is that we had a sunny summer. Anything else happen ever? Planes come over all the time. Do the planes from Cambridge come over here? Well, they really they don't fly over the town. I shouldn't ask you who lives there. Most of you all live. The planes come over the town? No, it doesn't come over. No. When I was a kid, seven years old or so, living in Slough, which is just west of Heathrow Airport, every five minutes a jet taking off, headed for America, would come over the house. The whole house would shake. And even if you shout at someone standing in front of you, they can't hear you, I guess. But at Heathrow, where can they go? I can't. Maybe they don't fly them on the slow. I don't know now. But I was thinking. They fly them in over the fields, and all the, all the hogs in the fields, they're all suffering. And not the people, not the hogs in Crawley. <laughs> but no, they don't keep hogs in fields anymore. They're all in, inside, right? Suffering, suffering, so much suffering. So we should give this knowledge to others and we should be aware of it, not just theoretically. We should be uh, aware that we should really be damn serious in our Krishna consciousness. It's suffering like we have to suffer. Everyone is suffering. So much suffering. If we can get a little relief from suffering, we think, oh, now everything is nice. Now is the opportunity to get free from birth and death by taking up Krishna consciousness. So we should open our mind to this. This reality is not a belief. It's reality that we're all suffering in this material world. And try to open others' minds to this also. People are very expert at closing their mind to the reality of the suffering of birth and death in this material world. It's extreme foolishness, isn't it? Isn't it extreme foolishness? That everyone is just avoiding. They'll have all conferences, peace conferences, interfaith conferences. But what are the real problems that we're all facing? They say, well, uh, ecological imbalance. That's not the problem. That is a serious problem as far as this planet's concerned. But even if there is ecological balance restored, which seems highly unlikely, uh, still we have to suffer birth, death, old age and disease. And actually if we become cognizant of this, that will solve all the econo ecological problems, economic problems, all problems. Because if we live our life for the real purpose, which is to get free from birth and death, to which means that we should worship Krishna, surrender to Krishna, then we won't be chasing after economic development for sense gratification. All problems of the earth will be solved. Because the only real problem is that we don't know what our problem is. We've closed our mind to it. So please try to inform others of this also. Spread this to others. Let people know that we are suffering in this world. We have to uh, and, and become cognizant of this. And it's not enough to say, it's not a Hindu belief or a Buddhist belief. <clears throat> Most Hindus, they don't believe it, from what I can see. They don't believe in birth and death. Theoretically. But practically, we, we, everyone's living their life <coughs> as if the purpose of life is to watch TV and go to the movies and People are not interested in understanding these important facts. There's nothing is important in comparison to this. We have to die. How can we get free from that? We have to get born again. We have to suffer again. How can we get free from that? That is the beginning of spiritual knowledge which Krishna uh, teaches us in Bhagavad Gita. From this understanding our spiritual knowledge, our spiritual quest can develop. So, I hope 
all of our minds have become more open, we become more open-minded. The gurus are supposed to make people more open-minded, so I hope all our minds are more open now. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any comments, protests, questions, or interceptions? <laughs> Any open minded questions? Open ended <coughs> questions? Closed minded questions? Any such thing? Closed mindedness means we don't ask questions. We already know. We think we already know. Anything? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right, it's all over. <laughs> suffering session, you have to listen to all that talk about suffering. And you can forget it all and be happy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, So, what's next on the program? We usually have Kirtan knowledge. Okay. Jai. Hare Krishna. Oh, I should speak and tell them how to books, books. You want to tell them how to Do you all have all of Srila Prabhupada's books in your home? Does anyone?